Hey guys, welcome back to my pre-war video, volume four. I'm just gonna jump right back, right into this. I'm gonna start things off with a 1926 W512 of Frank Frisch, the Fordham Flash. Switch hitting, second baseman, Bronx native who went to Fordham University and was a four-star athlete, four-sport athlete. Blank back, he was a 316 lifetime average hitter with 419 steals, 2,880 hits, 1931 MVP. He was a four-time World Series champ, three-time All-Star. The card set is similar to my W514, but as you can tell, the artwork on the uh, 512 isn't as nice as the 514. The Bob Schalke looks a lot more beautiful they spent a little bit more into the rendering of the likeness. But what it made up for in art quality, it made up for in names like uh, Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Rogers Hornsby, Grover Alexander, Dazzy Banks, Dave Bancroft, Tris Speaker. So this set does remain highly collectible because of those names. Moving on, I have um, a 1909, not a T206 but this S74 Silks card of Mordecai Three Finger Brown. He was named Three Finger Brown because he had a farm accident in his youth where he lost parts of two fingers. It's got nothing in the back because obviously if they printed something in the back, it'll show through on the front. These cards are very unique. I like them a lot. And in the set, they actually have a lot of big names also. Uh, Mordecai Three Finger Brown, because he lost parts of his two fingers, it's not a tragedy because it allowed him to grip the ball in such a unique way that it resulted in a curveball that broke extremely right before the plate, which allowed him to um, win two World Series champs, uh, championships with his team in 07 and 08 and had six consecutive seasons of 20 wins from 1906 to 1911. The Silk set... Uh, is comprised of 200 players uh, with names like Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, Cy Young, Christy Matheson, Roger Bresnahan. And it, it was made, you could find them in Helmar, Old Mill, Red Sun, and Turkey Red tobacco packages. And they had two types of cards. They had the white ones and some that had many colors like red, blues, greens. And they, as you could tell, they had the T205 um, pictures on it next up i'm excited i finally found me a card from the 1800s and this is of an old judge n172 from 1889 and it's of mike mattimore mike mattimore was not a great pitcher he had a four-year career as a pitcher with his best year he pitched 15 and 10 with a uh, 338 era but what made this card uh, a card which I chased was that it was obviously from 1800 and it had a grade of 1.5, which is actually a very good grade considering this card's over 100 years old. But um, what makes it very hard with these cards is that obviously it has staining here, which detracted from the grade, but I'll take it because the staining in the back didn't have anything in the front, which is great. But the Fading is the big deal with this card. If cards are very faded, like they're very bad cards. Like, not that they're bad, they're still collectible, but they just don't fetch as much money as a card with great tone, great contrast. And this card is like in the middle. Like it has good contrast, not great contrast, but it's definitely, you can see the stripe detail in the sock, you can see the detail which is still good, has no creases, still has all four edges. You can still make out the framing on the top and on the side, but on the bottom, it's faded where it says Matt Moore, Philadelphia Athletics, Old Judge, Cigarette Factory. And that's the thing about this uh, set is if you could find cards with great visibility, great tone, great pictures, um, they're very highly uh, desirable. You basically have to keep these out of light, which is what I'm going to do once I 
put this card away. I'm gonna put it basically in a cave with the bats in a black bag, treat it like it's a Jimmy Hoffer so no one can find it. But um, yeah, if you, you could actually find a card with great visibility and it's rounded and creased, people are gonna pay more for that card than one that looks like very nice and sharp, but is very faded. And that's the thing about this card. It's like uh, having a centered card when it's uh, got nice tone to it. Next up, I'm gonna follow it up with another unique card. This is a 1926-27 Aguilitas Cuban tobacco card. And it's of Emilio Palmero. SGC misspelled his name, they spelled it Palmiero, but it's actually Palmero. He actually was a Cuban Hall of Fame pitcher. You can see Aguilitas on the back. And it's got the tobacco staining on the back over here. But it's a very clean card. It's got all the, the corners look very nice and sharp. Good detailing with its likeness. Grade three for this card is actually really good. There's not many out there. They're considered very rare cards. And like I said, he was a Hall of Famer, very successful career in Cuba. But in the majors, he did play in the majors. But he was almost like a, a career minor leaguer. They did bring him up on numerous occasions and he just had cups of coffees where he just stopped in and then got sent back down. But in Cuba, he led the league in wins in uh, 1919 and 1920 and in ERA in 1917, he also led the league. So he was very good and successful. The set itself has like 900 cards uh, ranging from like artistry, theater actors, it has um, athletes from basketball, football, boxing, tennis, and baseball. But from the baseball athletes, it's um, mostly Cubans, Hall, Hall of Famers, and they got actually some Hall of Famers that are highly collectible, like uh, Immortals from Cuba. And those cards could fetch four figures for just regular subjects like ones or twos or threes. They're very desirable. And in boxing, actually, there's a Jack Dempsey card for boxing, and that one's very desirable also. Next up, I have two cards from one player. The first one I'm gonna start it off with my 1936 National Chickle card, R313 of Al Simmons. Al Simmons played 20 years, mainly for the Philadelphia A's. His nickname was Bucketfoot. Al bucket foot because his foot used to like just be firmly planted like it was in cement as he used to face the third baseline when he finished his uh, swing. So, it, but it helped in his stride because he basically had a 2,927 hits with a 334 lifetime average. Joe Kyoto seems like the person who previously owned this one has staining. Looks like uh, maybe it was kept in the basement and had flood damage. Very wrinkled. Doesn't have creasing, just like, seems like water damage. I didn't pay too much for this card. I think I picked it up for five or seven bucks. But um, for the player, Al Simmons, I just say, you know what? I'm doing it and I get to show you a 1936 Chickle. The set itself has the most notable name of Joe DiMaggio which is considered his actual rookie card, but the baseball card um, community doesn't really consider this a baseball card because it is pretty big. It's like a photograph size of uh, three and a quarter by five and three eighths. And it's nicknamed the fine pen series because they use a thinner pen when they made these cards so that it could have nice sharp details. So you could tell like around his foot and the wrinkles on his uniform, very good detailing on these cards. But it's still of the baseball card category, so it's still collectible. And um, they're very affordable, actually. You could pick up cards for like five, ten dollars. Like I said, this one, because it's kind of like messed up. Five, seven bucks, I think I paid for it. But to follow up Al Simon, I finally picked up a DeLong 1933 card. This one is very highly desirable. It's expensive cards, I'm not gonna lie. They're like $100 for like beat up looking cards with creases and everything, rounded corners. And this one, I really did well with. 
Um, very sharp card. I think if I send this off, it might grade no lower than a three, maybe as high as a five. And if this comes back a five, woof, I could almost see like four figures for this card. Uh, in the back, they didn't have anything like stats. It's one of the first cards which they catered to kids. And they used to give you tips on baseball advice. And it was pretty different at the time. And this was actually started by the treasurer of Gaudi, Harold DeLong, which is how DeLong was named. But um, he started this set and what made it unique was that they used black and white renderings and surrounded it by color, which no other card at the time had both either black and white or they were either a color, but not both. And this card set has uh, Lou Gehrig, his rookie card. And it also has Jimmy Fox and other notable players, but it only has 24 players in the set, which is why it probably fetches for a lot because it's a supply and demand. And uh, it's hard to find a very good subject. So this one I'm very happy I have that looks very sharp. I just hope that it comes back very nice. And last but not least, I'm gonna end this with, uh, I finally got my SGC package. Thank the Lord. And I did submit this one card, which got a three. And I am super excited that this thing got a three because I thought it would probably get like a 1.5 maybe at the most. It does have like some snowing on this portrait, namely right above his lip. And I thought because of that and a stain on the back, it wouldn't come back as high as a three, but it did. And because it's a three, there's a chance if I were to put this back up there, I could get anywhere from 600 to almost four figures for this card, which is like, I'm shocked that I was able to get such a high grade on this card. But, you know, for every now and then where I didn't get a grade, like in my previous video where you saw how upset I was with Willie Keeler, with this one, I did very good on. And that's gonna wrap up this video. And like I said, the SGC came in, so I'm gonna work on my next video, and the next video is gonna have all these cards in it. So it's gonna have nothing short of content, and that's why I'm so excited to shoot this video. So look for it, it's probably gonna be something I'm gonna work on for the next two weeks, and it's gonna be the biggest video I'm gonna shoot. I think I'm definitely gonna get um, an editing app to do this, and make it look clean cut and professional, and I'm very excited, so look for it. Until then, happy hunting, looking for cards, stay safe. Thank you for watching, subscribe, like, comment if you like, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.